G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Alright, so Tuesday morning here in Australia, obviously sort of, you know, Monday night over in the States, and we haven't really seen that bloodbath. Again, so the market's holding at the moment. It is actually up 8%, which is good. But look, over the seven day period, it's still chopping and changing sort of all over the place. Things, you know, have gone up a little bit and down a little bit, but on average, they're still kind of around about the same. All right, so, you know, up is better than down, don't get me wrong, but we're still not quite out of the woods just yet. But hopefully, you know, fingers crossed, the bottom was in. But let's have a look. Bitcoin dominance at 40%, so it's dropped a little bit, or I think it was about 41.8%. ETH dominance rising again, and ETH gas quite low, around 22. Again, we don't see that too often uh, of late, but, you know, we'll take it when it's there. And again, a bit of a mixed board, like, you know, there's some things that are up, some things that are down, and depending on which time frame you're sort of looking at. But again, the good thing is overall we're up 8%. And look, we are really hanging tough above that $1.5 trillion level, which is really, really good. All right, so let's have a look. What's really pumped in the last 24 hours, in the top 100 at least? All right, well, ZRX, there you go, out of nowhere, 50%. Aave, 20%. Nice, Kasama. Uh, sushi, Theta, Chainlink, so heaps of pumps that you can see there, and good pumps, but you just got to jump over to here, and what's happening at the moment is it's just a lot of volatility. So it may be up 20% in 24 hours, that's because it was down here a while ago, and now it's gone up to there, those kind of things, but it's just very choppy at the moment. It is literally all over the place. So there are gains, and I suppose if you want to be a day trader, you know, you could probably make some uh, pretty good money, but we're going to talk about day trading versus holding and things like that. Uh, and, you know, the implications of, you know, is it really worth it? Because look, I'll tell you right now, for the average person, it's not worth it. You're better off just simply holding. And again, we'll look into that. But look, some really good gains in the last 24 hours and over the last seven days not too bad for certain things as well but has anything got really hammered in the last 24 hours all right minor protocol haven't heard of it uh it's down uh there you go one one project really uh is down and then we're going into the stable coins and all the other coins so again that's why we got that eight percent sort of rise but that's only in the last 24 hours you know most things are still down you know, nearly 50% from their old all-time highs, even less for some of them out there. So there are some, you know, really, really good bargains out there at the moment, as long as you don't think we are in a bear market. If we're in a bear market, or at least that's your belief, I don't think we are, then obviously now's not the time to buy for you. Not that I offer financial advice, it's just my personal opinion. But look, if you don't think we're in a bear market and you think we've found the bottom and we're just going to level out for a while, then, you know, You've already missed some of you know some great opportunities, but again, not really because you know things are just kind of ranging. They might not be the cheapest that they've been because again, we go over here, we can th see things are just chopping and uh, changing, but they're generally still sort of around the same price, a little bit higher, a little bit lower, and things like that over the week. Uh, and you can see, look, some of them have even dipped lower. So XRP uh, was a whole lot lower, and at a dollar. Uh, five at the moment, you know, compared to the nearly two dollars it was, I think it got to a dollar eighty nine. Uh, again, that's basically makes it not quite, but around about fifty percent off, and that's where it is now after a near seventeen percent gain. If you manage to pick it up there, I'm going to say that was probably under a dollar, maybe ninety something cents. So again, altcoins, uh, even Bitcoin. Look, it's just ranging at the moment. It's really stuck between kind of thirty four thousand ish dollars. It you know will wick below. Uh, and sort of thirty-seven, thirty-eight thousand dollars again. It'll wick sort of up above, but everything's just in uh, a ranging motion. And again, some people will call that a consolidation phase. Like this is, you know, a really good time to get in. Again, unless you believe we're in a bear market. If you think we're in a bear market, then you know, obviously don't. Uh, I, you know, I've given my opinion on what I think is happening uh, on you know numerous occasions. Every video, actually, I'm always letting you know what I think. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to move on and have a quick look at the charts and one story I found very, very interesting. And then we're going to have a look at a chart and try and work out, you know, whether trying to time the market, uh, i.e. sort of trade, you know, the highs uh, and the lows and things like that is really sort of worth it, whether it's worth your time and money. But first of all, let's go to the Bitcoin chart. 
All right, so we can see this is that channel we've been in for such a long time. And again, generally buying down here is a good buying opportunity. This is where we are right now. And when it gets over this midway point is possibly, not always, possibly a good time to take some profits. Because again, if you took profits here, thinking oh, I'll be able to get back in and buy some more again, well, unfortunately, that hasn't turned out. And again, we might come down to twenty three, twenty four thousand dollars $24,000. You know, I've seen all sorts of stuff of people saying we might come down to $12,000, down to $8,000. Look, if we do, then, you know, anyone who took some profits here is going to be cheering. But it's just a rough guide. It's not an exact sort of science. It's not like right now, well, as soon as we get here, then I'm taking profits and I'll wait for it to come back down because you can see that that just doesn't happen. Again, here, you are only just barely able to take profits because it traded sideways. Maybe you might have been lucky to get in here, but sort of unlikely. Again, it's just a rough guide. It's a channel that kind of shows you where things are going. So at the moment, I mean, if we just focus in on here, now we are just traveling sideways. And I wouldn't be surprised if this continues on for quite some time. And again, maybe we even break outside of this channel with just ranging sideways for a while and then start to start to run underneath this. I'm not saying that's what's going to happen. I'm just saying I wouldn't be surprised if that's what's going to happen. For me, I'm dollar cost averaging when I get my pay, getting into Bitcoin, getting into Ethereum, uh, Cardano, uh, and like I said, maybe even Polygon. And I may dibble and uh, dibble, sorry, I may dabble in some altcoins sort of here and there. But again, if things take a turn for the worst, which they could, and again, maybe we are in a bear market, no one truly knows then obviously the altcoins are going to get hit really, really hard. So for me, that's when I'll just be focusing on Bitcoin on the way down. I'm happy to dollar cost average on the way down because you don't know when it's going to turn and it could be a bit of a fake out. And if you just keep holding off thinking, oh, no, I'm going to catch it at, you know, again, I'm going to catch it when it gets to, you know, $18,000 or $19,000 and it never gets there, then you missed out buying at those cheap prices. Uh and you'll probably have to buy at higher prices. But again, you do you, it's not financial advice, just my personal opinion. All right, a very interesting story that I found here. I really like Charles Cardano, I think he's a very smart man, uh, high in intelligence kind of guy. Obviously uh, part of you know uh, Ethereum and obviously you know the founder of Cardano. So I, I, I listen to what he says, I don't take it all as gospel, but I do think he's a very, very intelligent person and someone that, you know, you should at least listen to, whether you take every, you know, bit of advice he ever gives you, uh, you know, completely your call. But he says here, Charles uh, Cardano's Charles Hoskins says crypto is primed to overtake the entire financial market. And he even gives a timeline. No, I completely agree. I, I think it's, you know, almost guaranteed at the moment that it's going to happen uh, you know, there are some things that can kind of come up in the way, but I, really, I'm probably leaning more towards it's guaranteed to happen. It's just a matter of when. But I like this story and some of the things he said. So crypto is the industry that's the antidote to the excesses, cop, uh, corruption and nepotism that we found. This is, an in, this is an industry of frustration that has now been replaced by an industry of creativity and innovation. So he's talking about the old financial system versus the new. We're going to change the world. It's just that simple. Completely agree. I don't disagree with anything he says there. And there's simply too many people now. The markets are simply too large and the innovation is simply too fast. It's going to happen. Completely agree with that. I don't think there's anything the major financial institutions can do. They see the writing on the wall. They're trying to prepare themselves for what's coming and same with all the uh, large institutions and you know big money investors. But the thing is, I don't think they'll be able to ever get a stranglehold on it ever again because if they do get a stranglehold on something and try and force it into, you know, turn the new into the old, people are just going to move away from it. There'll be another platform, another thing that they can go to because that's what a free market is uh, and it will be a lot better uh, for humanity in the long run, I think. And so, look, I'm really glad. I don't think it's going to happen overnight and even Charles Hoskins says the same. So it's no longer a question of if, it's when and how will these dinosaurs find a way to survive uh, in this new world order. I don't think banks and that are just completely done for, but I don't think banks the way we have them today are going to operate 
anything similar i think banks are mainly going to be tech firms they're not going to have too many uh, you know you're not going to walk in to see your bank uh, too much anymore you know they're going to have call centers and lines cash is going to be dead we won't have that within the next probably 10 to 20 years if not even maybe sooner It'll literally be call centers you're calling up to talk about your problems and banking will be all automated and done online. Uh, it will be there for us. And again, if those banks try and turn these new systems into the old so they can manipulate them and corrupt them, a new one will just pop up. That's what's going to happen. They literally, because uh, it's all decentralized anyway, uh, and they w I think they're gonna have a hard time trying to stop that. Although I do think at first, that is probably what they'll do. They'll try and, you know, they're building positions now. There's news out there that says, you know, big banks and corporations and that, they're getting heavy into DeFi at the moment and, you know, picking specific targets. And that's great that they want to, you know, take advantage of that stuff as long as it's advantage in a good way. And to, again, not then turn these old systems, uh, sorry, these new systems into the old where they can now just completely manipulate it and all the rest of it. If that starts to happen, then you know again we'll be looking for more decentralized and i think that's what will happen if they do try to do that uh, a new platform a new program will come out and people will start to flock to that one and a new one will come out and people will start to flock to that one now there needs to be some regulation in there to make sure it's all legit in that and don't get me wrong all these big companies every time they see something new and innovative that comes in they're going to want to get a good piece of the pie but eventually it'll be so diverse uh throughout you know tons of different protocols and all the rest of it that they just won't be able to control you know uh, massive parts of it because they will just have to constantly keep putting money into a new thing and a new thing and a new thing uh, and they'll be you know basically like the rest of us that's my opinion uh, whether that uh, is how it works out or not i don't know because again regulation will come in and then maybe someone says no you can't have you know any new stuff coming out and you know again there is definitely ways that they could try to get a stranglehold on this industry and again turn this new system uh, more like the old system but I just really hope that that doesn't happen because we all know the old systems broke and it is simply set up to you know make it advantageous for the rich and extremely horrible uh, and soul crushing for the poor and we need to get rid of that system. It's uh, antiquated uh, and it's not in the, you know, the better of all humankind. And that, you know, I'm one of those kind of sort of hippies like that. I really do think I'm not a hippie, but, you know, I've got that hippie philosophy. I want a better world for everybody. I don't just want it better for me and my friends and, uh, you know, all that kind of stuff. I want it better for everyone. I don't want people have to suffer. Uh, I want us to all work together and, you know, for the common good of humankind. Uh, as opposed to, you know, just I want to be rich uh, and more richer than my neighbour and things like that. <laughs> uh, that's, you know, been the attitude of people for a long time in this kind of industrial age that we've gone through. Anyway, last but not least on this one, it says over the, this is Charles Hoskins saying this, over the next 10 years, there's going to be more advancement in monetary policy from our industry than the last 100 years of central banks. Yeah, I think central banks will be gone. I think at least in the form that they're in now. Uh, again, there's going to be things, and I don't know this for sure, but like, you know, the Aave protocol and maybe Compound and Maker and things like that, they are going to be our banks now. Uh, and again, the more decentralized they are and, you know, no major kind of whales that, you know, own 50% of, you know, all the uh, tokens and things like that. And again, if we ever do get to that kind of place, then again, we've got to come up with something new needs to come up so they have to keep diversifying and diversifying and diversifying until they just you know are kind of out of money and then they are exactly like the rest of us they're you know so diversified that they don't have any stranglehold on any one thing but in saying that every time something new comes out there will be you know certain players that will have a bit of a stranglehold on it but again if we've got you know 50 you know different kind of platforms that we can put money into i doubt there's any one organization that's going to have such a stranglehold uh, on any one of them but then my concern is again you know we've got to make sure that the protocols themselves are set up so they can't manipulate all the other ones that they all kind of work in tandem and work well together anyway that's my kind of rant for the day about that but i completely agree with what charles hoskins was saying here and i do think 100 percent within the next 10 years is where the biggest change is going to come and again i think DeFi is really going to make people you know wealthy beyond their imagination 
I just can't tell exactly which ones are going to do it. I've got my opinions. Uh, I've voiced them before. Hopefully, you know, at least one of them is right. Uh, and then, yeah, you know, to the moon and beyond, as they say after that. But what I want to do now is, uh, this is a shorter video today, is I just want to have a look at, you know, trying to, you know, sell the peaks and buy the troughs and all the rest of it. Is it really worth it? So what I'm going to do is we're going to go into here. So you can see all these red arrows. That's, these are where you're going to buy into the dips. And this isn't literally every single one. This is just all the big ones kind of over the last, you know, since sort of 2015 anyway. So we're not even including 2013 and 14 and all the rest of it. Let's say you bought Bitcoin here. So you were lucky enough to get it to $230. You saw it rise up to $311, so, you know, 50% gain. You somehow managed to sell the top, and then you managed to buy in at $195. So you made a 50% gain, and you've now lost 50% of it in tax. So it's a 25% gain. Now, don't get me wrong, any gains are gain, but now it's a 25% sort of percent gain of your total money. So again, now you ride this up to $400. And again, this is only if you manage to sell the top and then buy the bottom, and then you buy it for just under $300. So a good gain, but again, you've lost 50% in tax. And the, the issue is, is if you keep doing this, great, you're, you're gonna be stacking Bitcoin, but it's unlikely that you are going to leave 50% of that money for the tax man once tax time comes you just you probably won't and then when tax come time so you've already done 50 percent here 50 percent there now you have to sell to pay your tax and when you sell bitcoin again to pay your tax guess what that's going to be another 50 percent that you're going to get to be taxed again so it's 50 percent 50 percent 50 percent 50 percent 50% and so on and all of these and this isn't even all of them these are just basically the biggest swings you're getting taxed 50% every single time now again that is provided that you are watching the markets 24/7 and are reading you know the peaks and the troughs perfectly because if you're not you're still paying 50% tax you're just paying 50% tax on less of the gains like the bigger the gain, 50% doesn't hurt you so much. But if you're only getting like, you know, you're only a third of the way up and only a third of the way down, then you've lost a whole stack, but you're still going to pay 50% tax. I mean, it kind of evens out anyway. But what I'm saying is it's just so hard to do that. There are some good traders out there who can make a ton of money. They, they really can. But they don't win them all. And they work on, you know, as long as they're, up in the end then it's all good more times than they're kind of down like overall again they could lose five trades in a row and they only need one to be right and then it makes up for all the ones that were wrong and they're not trading with everything they still are investors at heart they have you know x amount of whatever it is that they're holding their the bulk of their wealth in and then they're trading with you know 25 maybe 50 percent uh of you know whatever uh, they have that they want to trade with so again you need to remember that traders they I'm not saying none but rarely do they ever trade with their entire portfolio they just don't they are investors at heart and then they trade with a percentage of it because if you're trading with everything you have and you get it wrong and get liquidated then you've got nothing and you have to start all over again whereas you look up here just holding equals zero percent tax costs. You don't pay anything. You bought into Bitcoin, and again, you were lucky enough and you got into at two hundred dollars. You get to here, and it's worth still around sort of thirty-four thousand dollars. You've paid no tax on that. You've paid none because you haven't sold any yet. You may pay some uh, a percentage gains tax along the way but it's not 50%. You're not getting slapped with 50%. Now, I'm not saying don't try and take advantage of obvious peaks and lows and that. So again, you were lucky enough to get into Bitcoin at $200. Uh, it's dropped down to, you know, God, $10,000 or something. I mean, you know, really, if it dropped 50%, you probably have missed it already. 
uh, but you might not have. But let's say again, you didn't. You sold here at around twelve thousand dollars, and then you were lucky enough, and you got back in at around four thousand dollars. You could triple your money there. You don't need to get the exact tops and bottoms. Nobody does. You need to remember that literally nobody picks the exact top and the exact bottom because if there was someone that could do that they would be the richest person in the world and they would own basically everything because they would know how to pick the exact tops and bottoms you just got to be thereabouts if you're going to do that but again you're still going to pay 50 percent tax when you buy back in or when you sell uh when you sell sorry not so much when you buy back in but when you sell so again for me this is just a very easy chart to kind of follow and i'm hoping people can understand it but by simply buying and holding there's no tax you don't pay tax on it as soon as you sell you owe the tax man 50 percent again most of the time you know if people sold here they would put it all back in down here if they were really picking the bottom they're not going to have 50 percent of the money they made left over to pay the tax man so then once the time comes to pay the tax they are then forced to sell enough to cover those losses and that then incurs another 50 percent tax right then and there so yeah for me i like to invest i do some swing trading every now and then and sometimes it works really well most of the time it doesn't you know most of the time i try to you know break even uh, if i have a few that go wrong i generally stop and don't do any for a while but at the moment i'd say my swing trades in general are probably about 50 50 50 of them work all right and 50 of them uh either you know just kind of break even or generally lose money to be honest so for me that's why i don't do too much of it i do do a little bit but hardly anything at all and again trying to pick the exact tops and bottoms really really hard but if you do kind of you know are lucky enough to read it well and you sell here and then you can buy back uh, in and around here you know again we're not trying to get the right the exact bottom you're unlikely to get it but you get back in here you will probably make some good money uh you know double triple uh what you can make in the long run but remember it's still that 50 percent tax all right look that's it from me i'd love to know your thoughts down below are you an investor uh or a trader are you trying to you know pick these you know tops and bottoms and you know do you have your 50 percent uh always left for the tax man ready to go or not because i think most people probably wouldn't and again they would then get the tax man you know sending the email or the letter or whatever it is that they do for you guys these days or when you go to uh, f f file your taxes they then say oh by the way you owe this much money and i'm going to say most people wouldn't have that money sitting on the side they would then have to go sell uh you know whatever it is that they have and then that would come out of the next tax uh the, the following year they would say oh you sold there even though you sold to pay the tax man they would tax you again now in saying this this only works when you're in a really good asset because if you're in some shitty sh oh, and i shouldn't you know shout out any coins or well you know i'm not shouting them out but like shiba inu or something like that this you can't guarantee this works because it may never go up after this bull run again this works if you're holding something that's good if all of a sudden what you're holding is good you know something fundamentally has changed about it then yeah you're probably going to have to sell but if nothing fundamentally has changed it's just a market turn you know which happens hold have some cash on the side ready to buy more on the dips like buying the dips i completely agree with that when the dips come take advantage of them but selling at the peak to then buy back on the low it just costs you too much it's 50 percent in tax every single time it's you know you've got to be really really smart and i'd say even really really lucky to be able to do that very few people can all right that's it from me so again last but not least we go over to the markets it is up eight percent let's refresh and just see if it's doing that 1.690 1.694 all right there we go up even a little bit more but i don't think we're out of the woods yet we could see some sideways consolidation for quite some time and possibly even some downside uh, hopefully we don't see the downside but who knows all right that's it from me stay safe be kind to one another hopefully you're all on that gain train at the moment and i'll see you next time